Rangar has always been one of the scariest junglers in the game. With his high snowball potential and his ability to solo carry games with just a few kills, Rangar players have always been a source of great frustration for many backline players. But in Season 11, Rengar junglers have seen less success than Rengar top players. While Rengar jungle is certainly not bad by any means, jungle Rengar has definitely fallen off in terms of overall power compared to its top lane counterpart. And today, we will be taking a look at the number one Rengar top in the world right now. This is how to play like a challenger. I'm DJS. I've been playing Rengar for four seasons now. I hit Challenger since season seven uh, with around 60 to 70% win rate every season. On season eight, I started playing on UW. I hit Challenger there also, played against like the best players in the Europe. And I think I pretty much mastered Rengar top. That's my favorite pick. Um, I play Rengar top for many reasons. The first one is it's super easy to carry when you get ahead. It's really snowball champion. Uh, you have a lot of easy matchups. Most of them are skill based matchups. Like if you have the knowledge, you almost all the time win. The idea behind Rengar top is very simple. You want to abuse Rengar's early game in order to snowball your lead and take over the game. It is similar in a way to Rengar jungle, but instead of using ganks to get a lead, you're going to be using your pressure and your quick trades to be able to do so. Rengar top has one of the strongest early games in the entire top lane. His Q is on a very short cooldown, and it's extremely easy for him to essentially get two abilities at level one thanks to his passive. Most people understand that Rengar's damage is bonkers in the early game, so usually what they'll do is they'll just give up the first few waves. This allows Rengar to get a few levels and an early XP lead, which allows him to get his two best tools in order to get an early game advantage. His first tool is being able to use two Battle Roars. Battle Roar heals you for half of all the damage that you've taken in the last one and a half seconds. So if you have two Ws ready, you can essentially heal back all of the HP that you took from your trade. This is Rengar's best tool for out trading and out sustaining most top laners. The second tool that Dejures uses often in lane to get an early game advantage is to use two empowered abilities in a single rotation. Rengar's passive generates one ferocity when he jumps from a bush. But this is only the case when he has zero ferocity. So what you can do is you can get to four ferocity, stack up for your Q, prepare your Q, use your Q and consume the stack. By using your Q, you will consume every single one of your ferocity stacks and you will go back down to zero. Once you have four ferocity stacks, wait for all of your abilities to come back up and then use your empowered Q to consume all four ferocity stacks. Now that you're back at zero, you can use your passive to get one more stack and then use all of your other abilities to get one more empowered ability. So you essentially get to use five abilities in a single trade. And this makes it extremely hard for anyone to be able to out trade Rengar. Now, if anyone is actually dumb enough to trade with Rengar in the early game, they'll probably just get punished for it and die. But in extremely high elo, most players are very well aware that Rengar's early game is super oppressive. So top laners in Challenger almost never feed Dejures an early game kill. Luckily, there are several ways you can take Rengar top's strong early game and transition it into a lead. The first most obvious way is to do a cheater recall. A cheater recall is when you slow push the first two waves and then fast push the third wave in order to crash a big minion wave into the enemy tower so you can go back to base early and buy something like a Doran's Blade. While this is an okay strategy, Rengar top doesn't really need a cheater recall in order to win lane. Here are some of the ways that Dejures abuses Rengar's early game to extend his lead. Early game as Rengar is, is super important. Uh, I usually have the three steps for the laning phase, the three first waves. Like first wave, you have to stack your ferocity. When you have like three or five, you try to all in the enemy. If she refuses, like she stays under the turret and just wait till you push. You just push, slow, slow push. That's important because when the second wave comes, you hit level two faster, so you can try to re-engage once again. If, she, if he or she refuses, you just push the wave and third wave will be pushed towards you. So you are safe from the jungler or if he comes, he loses a lot of wave because it's pushed. And after level three, you, are, you hit your biggest power spike because you can make the two 
empowered abilities. One of the biggest differences that make Rengar so much stronger in Season 11 is the fact that you're able to do three completely different builds on him now. These are the three different versions of Rengar and what scenario you will find them best in. Uh, Rengar is pretty much good to pick because he's super versatile. Right now, in Season 11, he can literally build any mythic item. Sunfire Edges, God Drinker, which is amazing, Eclipse, even crit items like Gale Force or Kraken Slayer. You can change the build every game, fit any role you need, Tank, Engager, Bruiser, Assassin, literally everything. Usually, it's my personal preference what I want to play this game, but the Tank Rengar works the best against other tanks because you have free grasp, uh, you scale pretty Pretty much the same like they do. Bruiser Rengar against Bruisers, Assassin against Mages or squishy targets like Queen or Gangplank. I buy build Crit Rengar when I'm really ahead. I think it's the highest DPS you can get because you have a lot of auto cancels and scales amazingly well with your passive. Rengar can be a rather mechanically intense champion. And if you know what you're doing on him, you can easily go for a 1v2 against a top laner and a jungler in the early game. Dejuris does this often against players he feels like he can outplay. But what is the difference between a Rengar that just goes in and feeds an extra kill to the enemy team, and what makes the difference between Dejuris who can 1v2 and look like a god? I almost all the time try to fight 1v2. Two things you have to keep in mind is you have to make use of your W. Second thing is the best way to survive the gank or kill the both of them is to have your velocity stacked. I look who is more squisher to fight. If I have Conqueror, it's super good because it's amazing rune to 1v2 and just jump on him from the bush. If they don't come, I just run away more or less. Basically, this is your jump range, but in reality, you can extend it. You have like quarter of a second to jump out of the bush, to make a jump out of the bush. This is normal range. You have in reality something like that. You can jump to this guy a little bit further. And if you have ferocity, you gain 50% bonus movement speed. Let's say you've got humo in build, you can make a jump like this. Pretty far, huh? If you have an item like Gale Force and the humo, plus some movement speed from runes or mobile boots, you can jump even further than that I showed you. Even that. You can even make jumps like that. Out of here. Right there at the corner. Ah, voila. One of the biggest factors that make Rengar top so strong is his ability to be able to leap from his teleport. If you TP from a bush, you actually gain an extra leap as soon as you come out of your teleport. Assuming that the enemy players are in range from the minion or the ward that you're teleporting from, you can immediately jump as if you were on top of a bush. This is huge for the first gank because you get that extra ferocity stack and you're able to just immediately gap close to the enemy champions. You can also pre-use your ultimate while teleporting as well. Because Thrill of the Hunt takes two seconds in order to actually activate, there's a small window before you can really make use of it. But when you ult and TP at the same time, you will show up to the fight immediately with your ultimate. So long as Rengar is actually able to get on top of a squishy champion in the early game, there's almost no chance that that person will ever survive his burst. Now, once you have your lead on Rengar, what should you be doing with it? In the mid game, if you have your ultimate, you should be looking for a few picks around the map. Try to group for every major objective and try to stay in bushes to go for picks on the enemy champions. But otherwise, you're pretty much just going to be sidelining and split pushing. Although Rengar is not the best split pusher in the game, because he has this early game advantage, he's able to put enough pressure that it splits up the enemy composition. Once the enemy comp is split up, it becomes easier for you to use Thrill of the Hunt and pick people off. But compared to other super top laners like Jax and Fiora, Rengar is not going to be the best 1v1 champion scaling into the late game. So you want to make sure that you take whatever advantage you have, transition it with your team, and make sure that you end the game as quickly as possible. Here's your build on Rengar. For tank Rengar, start D-Shield with one pot, 
Go straight into Bammy Cinder for the damage and wave clear. Rush Sunfire Aegis into Completed Boots. And then go Titanic Hydra into a variety of different tank options. The tank options will simply depend on whatever kind of team composition you're going up against. For your runes, you always take Grass to the Undying, Demolish, Second Wind, and Revitalize in order to make sure that you have a ton of sustain with your W throughout the early laning phase. Revitalize plus Spirit Visage will pretty much give you 3 HP bars if you time your Ws perfectly. Take Eyeball Collection and Ravis Hunter for a little bit more healing. And for Rune Stats, go Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Varying Resistances. For the other versions of Rungar, you can go into the Precision Tree and take either Conqueror or Fleet Footwork depending on your matchup. Fleet is a little bit better against ranged matchups and matchups where you know you're going to get poked out. Conqueror is better for extended trades. Go Triumph. Legend Alacrity or Legend Bloodline depending on the matchup, and finish off with Laugh Stand, Eyeball Collection, and Ravenous Hunter. For your abilities, you always max Q, W, then E. For your build on Sustained Bruiser Rengar, start D Blade with one pot. You want to back once you have Pickaxe, not other items. Pickaxe is extremely good because it builds into either Iron Spike Whip or Tiamat, two of the key components for your two first items. Get Ravenous Hydra first if you need a little bit of lifesteal and wave clear, or get Gore Drinker in order to survive burst a little bit easier. The rest of your build is also extremely situational. You can get bruiser items like Death Stance and Steric Gauge. You can even get tank items like Spirit Visage in order to make sure that you heal more, or you can even buy items like Essence Reaver in order to pop backline squishies a little bit quicker. For your crit build, start D Blade and one pot, rush Noon Quiver into Gale Force, Follow that up with Essence Reaver and Infinity Edge, and top off your build with Collector plus one Armor Penetration item. I fell in love with this champion because it's super fun to play. You have a lot of options to build, so you really can get bored of routine that you build every game. You have a lot of play potential. You can carry solo games, everything you want for solo queue. Rengar Top is not anything new to League of Legends. It has come and gone for many seasons. This is not the first season that Rengar Top has been good, and it is not going to be the last. But this is the first season where all three versions of Rengar, Tank, Bruiser, and Full Damage, are all viable in the top lane. Uh, thanks you guys for your watching this video. I hope uh, Rengar Top might be your pocket pick someday soon. You can find me streaming uh, sometime on Twitch TV, slash DJRest and my YouTube channel in the link below.